Se viene Starfinder segunda edición de los creadores de Pathfinder Paiso. Vamos a hablar hoy con Jenny Yarsavsky, diseñadora senior en Paiso, que nos va a contar todo de este juego de ciencia fantasía con aliens, naves espaciales. ¿Qué diferencias hay con Pathfinder segunda edición? ¿Qué cambios hubo? ¿Qué desafíos hubo? Y como siempre, consejos para quienes quieran insertarse en la industria de los juegos de rol. La entrevista empieza ya. Hi Jenny, thank you for being here. And uh, first of all, let's go, let's go and talk a little bit about Starfinder 2nd Edition. We've seen the announcements, we've seen uh, the field tests uh, with some species, classes, monsters, weapons, uh, and the big playtest of Starfinder 2nd Edition is coming on August. So what is Starfinder 2nd Edition in your words? So Starfinder 2nd Edition is a science fantasy tabletop role-playing game uh, based on the Pathfinder game setting that Paizo, my company, does. Um, and when I say based on it, what I mean is, you know, Pathfinder is this is this game about a fantasy world called Galarian, uh, an Earth-like planet, high fantasy with elves, dragons, dwarves, all that cool stuff. But in you know thousands of years in the future galarian just disappears from its solar system but there's still people on all these other planets and there's a period of time that nobody can remember called the gap where everyone's memory was just lost stolen scrambled even historical records are completely scrambled magic and prophecy can't tell anyone what happened the gods aren't talking And out of that time, the planet Galarian disappears and a space station called Absalom Station rises into the sky in its place. And we have this world of just all these different planets and alien species, as well as the familiar faces and familiar creatures and, and magic from Galarian all mixing together. So that is Starfinder. Uh, obviously, Starfinder First Edition exists. It's a wonderful game that I've played for many years. And Starfinder 2 is just our update, bringing Starfinder into compatibility with the Pathfinder 2 rules so that anybody who knows how to play Pathfinder 2 can learn how to play Starfinder very easily. And uh, for people that, that play Pathfinder that perhaps haven't tried Starfinder, Starfinder is a little bit more than just Pathfinder in space, right? I mean, it's... Absolutely. What kind of difference can someone find, for example, between Starfinder and Pathfinder? So Starfinder, of course, has all of your science fantasy technology. So spaceships, computers, uh, comm units, all kinds of like magic that affects technology. But of course, there's a whole a whole solar system, which is the Pact Worlds in our setting, um, a group of planets that all have a pact to have mutual defense and not to war against each other. And beyond that, there's just a whole galaxy. Uh, we have near space, which has many other solar systems full of just all kinds of peoples and cultures. Then we have the vast, which is distant space. Um, we have drift travel, which is our hyperspace, you know, space fast travel sort of system. So yeah, I mean, there's, like I said, there's all the Pathfinder things, you know, but there's all sorts of aliens that you have never encountered before in Pathfinder. That's amazing. So you you've told us that uh, Starfinder Starfinder Second Edition is designed to be fully compatible with the remastered recently remastered rules of Pathfinder 2e. You've worked in both in both editions. So, as a designer, do you find it easier to design in this new iteration in iteration of the system <laughs> in this new version? Yeah, um, I actually do, uh, because after the initial getting used to it, because I worked on Starfinder 1 first as a freelancer and then as a staffer for about two years, two, three years before we started our serious, you know, really digging in, doing work on Starfinder 2nd Edition. So there were some things I had to adjust to um, with Pathfinder 2E rules, plus adding everything in Starfinder that already existed, but just making it, you know, run on the same math. Um, but I like it a lot because I find that with Pathfinder 2, um, there's a lot of... So Starfinder has a lot of customization options as well, but Pathfinder 2 seems to support 
just having narrative things happen and making that supported with the rules. So for instance, just the three action economy system is so good, like being able to break things down into, okay, it's not just casting a spell. It might be, you know, this spell is two actions and this could be, you know, charging forward, then attacking and, and casting a spell with the attack. For instance, um, I feel like it supports a lot more of narrative and like the fantasy of playing this character. And Starfinder 1 is great, but a lot of that was accomplished with math, just like just number bonuses getting higher, which they still do in Pathfinder 2 and Starfinder 2, but it happens at a slower pace. And it seems like the focus is often more on what are the what are the cinematic things my character does in, in Starfinder 2, which I think is really cool. So follow following that, uh, mm -hmm. Pathfinder is a fantasy game. Starfinder is a science fantasy game. What would you say are the biggest differences and challenges that the design team faces when designing for this game in particular? Well, uh, first of all, you know we we have spells and magic, but we also have technology. So those. <laughs> Those things often have very similar functions. So we might have, uh, we have a shield spell, but we also have, you know, shields, like we have literal shields and we have shields, you know, armor upgrades that, that give you like a little force field. So those are very similar design spaces. So, you know, figuring out how do we make these things work together and be balanced, but also feel different uh, because you don't want your magic shield to necessarily be exactly the same as your tech shield or that's boring. Yeah. Um, that's one thing. The other is, uh, while the rules are compatible, we have kind of a different, what we call meta state for Starfinder. So for instance, Pathfinder, most combat happens in melee. So, you know, you're, you're like in close combat with sword and board, or m maybe you're casting spells. Some people are archers, you know, have ranged options. But in Starfinder, everybody has access to guns, basically, or, or grenades, other ranged weapons. So that changes things. We have to really think more about tactical, uh, tactical terrain features and things like taking cover. Um, and that affects us when we design both character abilities, but also designing encounters for adventures. So going a little bit back to, to science fantasy, before we head right into the system, the, the, the gritty part of the system, uh, but finally, it's science fantasy, right? You you describe yourself in social media. We are journalists. We do a little bit of professional stuffing as, <laughs> uh, as someone that that loves uh, aliens and mechas, right? And, mm -hmm. yes. uh, have, have you always loved uh, sci-fi, science fantasy? Uh, was this was this something that you always interested you? Something you discovered in Paiso? How how did you uh, come to this uh, genre? Well, I I guess I have always liked science fiction and science fantasy since I was a kid. Um, I watched Star Wars with my dad growing up. Uh, he read Lord of the Rings to me. You know, he read a bunch of books like that, which is that's more pure fantasy. But as soon as I found things where they were like flying around with like blasters and lightsabers, I was like, oh, this is it. Like, I love this. <laughs> um, so I, I have definitely loved it since I was a kid. When I got older, though, that's when I got into Mecca. I, I did not ever see it as a child. Um, I watched Sailor Moon as a kid, but I that was like my big anime when I was young is like, oh, magical girls, yay. But then when I got older, I saw Macross, which is, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's a Mecca yes. anime. And I was like, where has this been all my life? This is like so great because, you know, there's there's mechs, there's aliens, there's spaceship battles, but there's also idols who sing songs and, you know, transform into like beautiful warriors who fight with like the power of music. And that's just, it's so good. I've always loved it, but just just finding more and more as I get older and like learn about other other cultures, media and like, oh, this is this is great. <laughs> we have a, a, here in Argentina, at least I don't know if in the uh, US it was uh, like that. We had a little bit of a mashup of macros called uh, Robotech or Robotech. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and I think it, it was the main bits of macros a little bit remixed uh, in a new story. So uh, I, I know what, you, what you're talking about. And it was a, a big part of my childhood and my brother's childhood too. So <laughs> I, I was uh, just reminiscing a little bit. Uh, with what you were saying. Well, so 
Oh. Uh, you, you told us about the, the, the technology and the, the, the science part of the, the science fiction of Starfinder that, that puts a little bit more emphasis on ranged combat than mm -hmm. stand part, that Pathfinder. Ah, words. <laughs> <laughs> They're hard. <laughs> so, yeah, sorry. That's How okay. does the, the three action economy hold up in a game that has many shootouts with energy weapons and from far away? Like, it, it's a little bit different than in Pathfinder Fantasy. Uh, how, How, how this does this work, and especially in second edition? So it actually, so far, with our internal play tests and the demos I've run at a few conventions, so far it's been really amazing because so there's there's a few things that we're that we're trying. I mean, first of all, when you have uh, in ranged combat, so there's still a few melee options. Um, our Solarian, for instance, at least in play test, is very melee focused. Uh, they do have a little solar flare that's like their little, you know, range that like, can shoot like a little pew pew. Um, but they typically will want to just rush into melee and they've got like a little charge type ability that gets them there. But the big thing is, you know, if you have a gun, so yeah, okay, so maybe you'd think I could just stand around and this would be boring. I'd just try to shoot, you know, three times. But what I've found is that people will typically do things like move into a position, then they'll shoot um, and they might duck into cover. Because again, as I said earlier, cover becomes a lot more important in Starfinder because just the tactical positioning and the bonus to AC that it gives. There's also uh, classes that can aim and can um, can deny some aspect of cover to enemies. So that also becomes interesting. There's there's different tech items. So, you know, you might have um, a force field or a, a jump jets that you can activate with one of your actions. So it turns into kind of a, you know, all right, I'm typically going to move in and then maybe shoot and, and take cover or activate some kind of technology I have that gives me a buff or lets me do some cool thing or um, I can cast a spell that's like a two action spell and then I get to shoot. So I find that it's really cool, especially as a caster, because a lot of times as a caster, if you, you know, a lot of spells are two action um, and it's like, well, what do I do with my third action? I guess I could run, you know, I could move or I don't know, like drink a potion. I don't know what I would do, but like in Starfinder, we like to say I cast gun to just mean like, then I shoot. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. Yeah, pew pew. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun so far. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> sorry. I have my... You've got a cat. Don't be sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things that you mentioned in the first field test is that you are going to put your focus on letting players upgrade their guns. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? That sounds really cool, of course. I'm sorry, say one more time. It, um, you, you, oh, sorry. Uh, you mentioned on the, in the field test that you are going to, to put your focus on letting, letting your players, or the, the players, upgrade their, their guns. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Could you talk a, a little bit more about that? So... Because it's cool. <laughs> It is cool. Um, so we on the Starfinder team know that a big part of sci-fi and sci-fantasy games are equipment. You know, when I play, whether it's Borderlands or, you know, Halo, it's like you you always want to like grab guns and like, you know, looter shooter type thing where it's like, oh, I found some guns and like I can, I can either craft these or just get like a cool new weapon as I level up. We want to have something that feels like that without being overwhelming. So um, in Starfinder, instead of having weapon runes, like in Pathfinder, we have a system that we we kind of call it CTAs up for short. Um, it stands for Commercial Tactical Advanced Superior Elite. Um, I'm like forgetting <laughs> advanced pair anyway, but it's like the levels of guns. Uh, so basically you have a what we have a wide variety of, of different types of weapons. Some are, you know, machine guns, some are 
energy cannons or laser pistols, but every single gun has kind of this upgrade system and it's a progression that's based mathematically on the way that weapon runes upgrade your weapons in Pathfinder. So instead of having magical upgrades, you can just naturally, you know, go and like buy or, or like upgrade your own gun to being that higher level. And we also have um, something we're play testing anyway. Uh, we have weapon um, weapon upgrades, which are things like anything from silencer to just you know, oh now my weapon does like you know my weapon uh, blinds blinds people or it has like some extra critical effect. So we have both the progression of you know level up your guns and add cool stuff to your to your weapons and armor as well. So we are talking about technology and Starfinder, it has its, it has it in the name, stars. Will we yes. see starships in Starfinder second mission? Uh, you will. Uh, we are going to have starships. Um, starship combat is something that in Starfinder first edition is very, uh, it's controversial. Some people love it. Some people didn't love the system. And we, we think that it's because, you know, and I personally always liked Starship Combat, but I played with a group that really understood the rules and that would, you know, plan as a team, like, what are we gonna do? You know, the pilot is gonna try this and the gunners will do that. Um, and I can understand that if you don't have a group like that, it might not have been as satisfying, but uh, Starship Combat is something that we are still really working to try to make the best we can because we want it to be fun. We want it to be approachable and not like overly complicated for people. And we also want it to be something that, you know, you can sit down and you can use your character, your character's abilities, like the abilities that you get from being a soldier or or an operative or a mystic, somehow that there should be special abilities or actions that you can take in Starship Combat. I'm not sure exactly what that'll look like yet. We have been trying out some different things. We've been working on it a lot and I can't, obviously, I can't talk about that, but there will be starships in Starfinder, don't worry. <laughs> Amazing. So. I think you you may think that a starship is something so uh, complicated, so so complex that, of course, battle starships, uh, uh, battling starships, it's uh, it must be very hard to make a a friendly approach to to those battles. But it's amazing you're working on that. On that. Uh, one of the main points of uh, Paiso has mentioned about Starfinder 2e is that it is compatible with Pathfinder 2e. Mm -hmm. You told us uh, earlier. Are there any plans or any crossover events or adventures besides the gap? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the gap gap is our big crossover. Uh, <laughs> okay, so far, I, I can't talk about that yet. Uh, however, we have already technically done a crossover um, with Starfinder 1 and Pathfinder 2 uh, in our organized play program, Starfinder Society and Pathfinder Society. I think it was two years ago, we actually had our big special event that we run at a lot of conventions. It actually was um, the Pathfinders are, they're all, the Pathfinders and Starfinders are exploring a ruin. And it turns out it's like a time lost ruin. It has like some temporal time anomalies going on. And they're actually exploring the same place, but like in the past and in the future. And we had a little bit of crossover. Like if, if you played both of those events, you would get the full story. So we have done this before. I, I can't confirm or deny if we have plans for it, but just saying it has happened before. And, you know, as a GM, you'll be able to do that in your own game if you'd like, because you'll have the you'll have the technology. I mean, all you really have to do is just take a gun and give it to, you know, give it to a Pathfinder creature or maybe, you know, maybe Numeria happens again and there's another spaceship that crashes and your Pathfinder group has to go explore it or your poor Starfinder group walks through a wormhole and they come out and they're like, where are we? We're on Galarian? Like, what? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> it's a fun idea, for sure. Amazing. Yes, 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 of course. So, uh, <clears throat> jumping a little bit. 
um, now in the design. In the frequently asked questions sections of the playtest page, Paiso says that the playtest is going to be focused on what we see as being key components to Starfinder. What are those elements that you are focusing on? So the play this playtest will definitely be focused on um, our classes, like so our core classes, which. I don't think we have confirmed all of the classes yet that will be there, but all the ones that you've seen um, in the play test, um, we're also focusing on, we have like a set of equipment. So definitely guns. We want to test guns. We do want to test melee combat because while ranged combat is very prevalent in Starfinder 2, we know that people will still want to go in and just hit it, you know, hit something in the face with their with their doshko or their or their plasma sword. Um, we have a we have a suite of spells that we've made, so we'd really like to test some brand new spells. Uh, a lot of Pathfinder spells will still work in Starfinder 2, and you'll notice that um, when the playtest rulebook comes out, there's a lot of uh, we've cited some Pathfinder 2 material from the player core. Um, and and of course you can if you have that book you can use that. We also have that those rules for free on Archives of Nethys, which is great. Um, so we really want to test like the new classes, the new spells, some new equipment, and yeah, we've got we've got some monsters too that we really just want to see like how how does this ranged meta thing work? Like how does it work when combat is more often at range and most combatants have a ranged option even if they do go into melee they have that option um those are those are like some of our biggest things that we want to test like i'm trying to think if i forgot anything but those are those are kind of the major ones so oh and new new ancestries of course uh, oh. our alien ancestries we want to test those out too so nice. that is something um uh, really interesting about starfinder because in earlier editions, in, in the first edition of Starfinder, it was uh, quite shorter to make a, a, a new ancestry. I mean, it was mm -hmm. a little uh, a little bit of text even. I mean, you could fit uh, perhaps two or three ancestries in, in one page. But now with the feats and everything, uh, it's a lot uh, larger. Uh, are you, are we, or could we expect less ancestries in Starfinder than at least in the in the playtest than in the uh, first edition. It will it will take us a while, I think, to get to where we were um, or and where we are right now in Starfinder One because, well, we've had in Starfinder One, it's like we've had like seven years to you know release all these ancestors or these you know species or ancestries. And like you said, yes, um, Starfinder ancestries are typically like, you know, here's a little sidebar. Um, here's, you know, OK, you, you just adjust these these uh, stats and get a fly speed, get, you know, limited telepathy or whatever other goodies um, and, and like a little bit of flavor. But uh, it's really cool. You, there is that more of a so like the cantina feel like, you know, Starfinder cantina is like what we always like what the community has embraced calling that. We don't want that to go away. Uh, we want to have as many alien ancestries as possible, but it will probably take us a few releases to get to that robust level of, you know, just just so many options. Um, we do have some pretty good options, though, just in the playtest rulebook. We, uh, I'm just, I don't know if I if we've announced all these, so I can't tell you, but I'm just looking through, and it's like we've got some weird ones in here already um, from the get go. And while we we won't start out with just dozens right off the bat, at least not in our play test. We do have, I feel like there's more detail in the way that PF2 and Starfinder 2 ancestries are written because there's just more, there's like a little bit more lore, like from the beginning, you get more about their physical description, their societies, their, you know, t common beliefs. And then you have heritages from the beginning. So you have, and all these ancestry feats. So it allows you as a player to, to go more in depth. So while we may have a bit less in the beginning, I feel like they have more depth. Um, I am definitely curious though what people think when they start to actually play test. And when this comes out in August, like please like come to the forums uh, or on, on Reddit and let us know if that's true, if you feel like that's true or if we're just saying that because I, I want to know people's opinions. But 
yes, um, we, we do plan to have uh, a cantina still be open in Starfinder 2. <laughs> And um, going a little bit into another of the major things that you are uh, testing, uh, you've also said that the Starfinder, Starfinder classes uh, will not just be uh, the Pathfinder classes in space, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's in the frequently asked uh, questions a uh, bit, right? So a Starfinder soldier will not be just a fighter in space, and a mystic right. is not a cleric or an oracle. Uh, what can we expect from uh, from the Starfinder classes that we don't know about yet? The ones that are still to come. So, ooh, ooh, I don't know what I can say. Um, <laughs> uh, the ones I can talk about, obviously, so Soldier is, which, which you can see because you have a field test with Soldier or with some of Soldier. You know, it's our goal there is like, what, what would a ranged tank look like? That was kind of how we started. So we want, you know, big and bulky, can take some punishment, but can deal some punishment to multiple enemies. Um, our envoy is obviously, um, a lot of people have compared it to like uh, the 4E Warlord or cause, and that's not, that's not really like what we used for our design. Like it inform all of those things, you know, inform our design, like things we've played that we've enjoyed. But the idea of it is um, kind of a, a, a non-magical buffer um like a boost class uh we've got we've got some casters you know mystics are our healers but not healers because they they have their connections and they can do all kinds of other cool like spells that damage or crowd control um we've got some we've got some other cool ones like our operative as well and yeah i mean it, it's very it would have been easy to have operative just be like the space rogue um or or soldier be the space fighter but if you really wanted to, you could just play a fighter. I mean, there might be some adjustment there, um, and that is something that we do hope to give a little bit of support for if you want to play a Pathfinder class in Starfinder, but we also want the game to stand on its own. So there will only, there if there is any of that, it will be limited because the biggest thing is we want this to be a standalone game that you, that, you know, is just Starfinder and not, not just Pathfinder in space. Um, so yeah, we've, we've got some we've got some interesting things that I wish I could talk about all of them, but in August you'll get to see. <laughs> that's that's awesome. I I, I I really I really love that 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 you mentioned that uh, you are thinking and supporting the the possibility of using Pathfinder classes in Starfinder, um, and you have also announced some changes to the world or universe galaxy and lore of starfinder including a possible world shattering event is something big going to happen are you allowed to tell us <laughs> without uh, getting in trouble <laughs> i think well i think i can because uh the creative director actually posted on twitter about it a while ago so i think i'm allowed to um So yes, we, we had teased that we would be uh, destroying a planet um, in the Pact Worlds, and we did not say which planet that would be, but uh, we, again, I, I didn't say this first, Thirsty said it before me. Uh, it is in fact um, our planet Octurn, which is our like eldritch like mythos planet that many people believed was like an egg for some kind of great old one or like outer god that planet uh is going to experience an interesting event and i don't know it might be hatching and there might be something interesting coming out of that but i won't Ooh. say any more if you if you're curious <laughs> You have to play or read a, a Cosmic Birthday, which is our first um, playtest module that will come out at, in August at Gen Con as well with the rulebook. Amazing name. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. And I wrote that one. So if you're also right. interested for that reason, check it out. Um, it's 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 pretty pretty wild. <laughs> so so I, I will continue with that. So Paiso has always been recognized as recognized for writing good adventures and campaigns. So will there be adventure paths for Starfinder 2? Uh, there will be. 
Um, we have not yet announced what our first ones will be and when, um, but we do have plans to have adventure paths as well as modules. Um, we definitely want to have adventures for people because a lot of people like to just run them as written. It's it's like easier to prepare when you're very busy. You know, it's just, okay, cool. I can just like read the script basically. And a lot of people like to mod them. So start with an adventure path and add stuff as your players, you know, play around and break it and go off the rails. Like, all right, like, cool. I'll just, I'll just start making stuff up. Um, so for when Starfinder 2 comes out or when the play test comes out this year, we will be releasing, um, like I said, a cosmic birthday, which is uh, for first level, first level characters. I believe it takes you through fourth level. And we will also be releasing a higher level adventure um, beginning at 10th level. Um, we haven't talked much about it, but it's called Empires Devoured. That will come out soon after. It's also a play test. But while these are play test modules, they are written a lot like our modules or like uh, like the first volume, like one volume of an adventure path. They are a full story um, and they, they definitely like they tell their own story and they cover big events in the setting. So it's something that we hope people will still want to play even after the playtest is over. And, and then we will have some bigger adventures coming out in the future. Yes. Awesome. So, uh, during the Pathfinder uh, remaster uh, project, uh, the design team had, had to do what they called a little bit of cleanup because they moved from <laughs> the OCL to the ORC license, right? Mm -hmm. um, are there any uh, major changes in Starfinder 2nd edition uh, because of this change, because you had to, to uh, drop the, o the OCL? Yeah, so there's a lot of little a lot of it is so insidious and little like um like off guard you know becoming from um flat-footed or instead of attack of opportunity we have reactive strike and all of that carries forward into starfinder 2 so all of the rules will be the same um you know and a little bit with the cosmology like some of the the demons and angels and some of that but um one of i think one of the biggest things so there's, there's two big things that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, one are dragons. So obviously we, we will no longer have chromatic dragons. And I can't talk too much about that. I know that Luis Loza, our Pathfinder creative director, has been talking a bit about their treatment of dragons, which we are going to have our own cool dragons, but we're also, we can borrow from them and, you know, like share. Um, so. Triaxis is our planet of dragons and people, like all kind of living together. So it will change a little bit of how Triaxis looks. Um, also, the biggest one I think would probably be Drow because Aposte is our, like this, it's just this weird barren planet um, with all these like gates inside it that like lead into some mysterious, maybe a dungeon, maybe, maybe just some kind of tunnels. Um, and drow, you know, dark elves live on this planet and they have kind of this cyberpunk dystopia on the planet. And it's really popular, like people love it. I love Aposte and Night Arch is the name of, the, of their big city there. Um, but obviously we, you know, drow are something that we're not really comfortable having in our setting because of, of the remaster changes. So we are going to have to remaster that a little bit and I know what we're doing. I, I don't think, I do think I will get in trouble if I talk about it, but I'm really excited about it because it is a more subtle change um, that makes a lot of sense with both the ancient Pathfinder history, but also modern Starfinder times. I think people will still love it. I think it it will fit what they, uh, what they like about Drow is not going away, but it is going to change how we present things going forward. So th those are the two big things I can think of. But there's, there's a lot, just like a lot of little things. Um, Pathfinder 2 had already kind of gotten away from a lot of OGL stuff, but there were definitely still some, you know, some heirlooms, I guess, in there. <laughs> But of course, <laughs> I was, uh, yeah. So when Baiso announced uh, Starfinder Second Edition, the announcement the announcement said that uh, the design team had the intention to make Starfinder's playtest play 
the most open playtest Paiso has released to this date. How do you plan to achieve that? <laughs> this uh, is it's amazing. Of course, there are the field tests, but mm -hmm. how 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 open how 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 is the how is it that this we this will be the most open playtest uh, you can do? So, the, uh, like as you just said, the field tests were the first part of that, um, just giving early previews to people. We actually still have one more planned, uh, field test five, I think it's in May that it's releasing, but don't quote me on that. Um, I, I, I should know that, but I don't remember. Um, it's been a long day, but uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, but it, it's going to be something a little different than we've done, um, and we've been really active in a couple of online spaces like our forums in several discords and reddits to just really get people's thoughts um, and gauge reactions and then for the play test itself um, so we're doing a few things a little differently than the pathfinder 2 play test did we're trying to just iterate on it and make it make it just you know just learn from what we've done in the past so we will have a soft cover rule book, which it is for sale. Um, that's for people who just want, uh, you know, a piece of the history or a reference. But we will have all of the rules available for free as a PDF download on paizo.com. Um, we are going to have all of the foundry support from day one. So day one of the release, there will be all the, the playtest rules in foundry. It'll be through the Pathfinder uh, foundry modules, but in the end, we will have our own Starfinder 2 modules. Don't worry. Um, so that's part of it as well. And we've actually had the foundry, the foundry devs actually gave us some feedback, some very early feedback on our playtests, like alpha rules. Um, because they were working very busily on getting all of that coded into Foundry and they they would read through things and say, oh, do you th that might be an error or does that really work that way? And it allowed us to have like a conversation with them as well, which is really cool. Um, and then we're obviously starting in August, we're inviting everybody in the world who wants to play in to, to play test. Uh, we'll have, we have forums for discussion. We'll have some surveys and probably some other ways of, of getting targeted feedback. And so, so that's kind of it is just trying to involve, um, not just the community, but like, but other, our, our, our gamer player community, but also communities like foundry devs and people like that in the play test process. So hopefully uh hopefully it is it people do feel like it's open but i think having the rules just available for free and also available on foundry immediately is going to help a lot because people can play online a lot easier that way i agree uh so so what are you most curious about when the play this actually starts like what part are you personally most interested in seeing if it's going to be well received or liked by the players or, or, or what? Hmm, that's a that's a good question. Um, I think I definitely want to see how people feel about the classes, like if they, you know, if they enjoy um, like a lot of the class feats that we've designed, like if they if they like those. Um, I'm also curious, uh, some of the spells we have are, are pretty weird, like we've come up with some, we have some really big concepts, like big ideas, like one of our spells is called doom scroll, like, you know, doom scrolling on social media, like when you're just like on Twitter and you're just like, oh my God, no, like looking at all the bad news. Um, there's a <laughs> spell that does that to you that like makes your, your comm unit or your computer just like have bad news and you like can't look away. Um, and then there's, there's things like, um, motivating ringtone so it's a spell that causes your phone to ring with a, a song that is like your theme song and it makes you feel feel good and kind of give you a little little boost i just want to see i'm curious if people think that the rules behind that lives up to the idea um i'm really curious to see that and if it doesn't you know we'll figure out what we can do to try to make it better and more fun but yeah, I think I think that's it is like do our big ideas like the theme 
do the rules really support that? Does it really make you feel like that's what's happening is what I'm curious about. So, um, Shenya, you've been working with Paiso for some years now. Uh, is, it, is it 10? I, I am mistaken. Is it, how, how much has, has it been? If so, I can ask. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. Um, so I think, ugh, I have to think, I think it's been about 10 years uh, since I started freelancing. Right. Um, and I, I started working, you know, as a contractor for Paiso. I've been at the company as a full-time staffer for four years. Um, so yeah, it's been a while now. <laughs> it's been a little bit. <laughs> so how, how did you start your career as a TTRPG RPG developer? Um, how, how did you uh, first uh, stumble into this industry? So I started playing Pathfinder and I loved it. And I started going to conventions and I found out that if you volunteer to run a bunch of games that they'll, you know, they'll actually pay for you to like sleep in a hotel at, you know, at Gen Con and other big conventions like that, um, if you volunteer your time. So I started doing that and I was at Gen Con um, just, you know, GMing and I, I had like, I was taking a break and this, a guy, like a gentleman sat down beside me and we just started talking and he was really friendly. Um, we just had a conversation and we talked about like, you know, oh yeah, I'm here playing and running Pathfinder, uh, you know, telling him about how I used to, I love writing, but you know, I, I was a teacher at the time. I wasn't writing professionally. And he was, he told me that, you know, you actually can make money. You can have a job writing for games. And I, I had just never thought of it. Turns out I was sitting next to Owen Casey Stevens, who's kind of like a legend in the tabletop world. Um, he worked at the time was working for Paizo uh, full time on staff. And he was like, well, I do some third party publishing. Would you be interested in in writing for me, just trying something out? And I was like, oh, oh my God, yes. So uh, he gave me a chance. Like I sent him some emails and he was like, yeah, you're writing. You know, clearly you can you can communicate in written words. So sure, like we'll try. We'll see if you can, you know, we'll give you a little project. And that gave me the confidence to apply at Paizo. Now, the first time I applied at Paizo, I was not qualified at all for the job. And I did not get the job but uh, one of the publishers sent me, um, saw my writing sample and asked me if I wanted to freelance. And so through these connections that I made at a con and people who, who gave me a shot, I was able to prove myself and get involved. And I just, I started writing um, ever since then. And, and yeah, and I, I did Pathfinder for a while, but you know, honestly, as soon as Starfinder came out, that was it. Like, cause I was just like, nope, it's that like star, like the sci-fi, I want to be there. Um, <laughs> so I've actually been doing uh, Starfinder work since Starfinder one came out. Uh, first, first season of organized play, Starfinder Society. I wrote a couple of adventures and I've done like little bits and rule books and it just kind of built up until I was writing adventure paths and, you know, bigger assignments and now, have my dream job basically with uh, an amazing team so uh you know you don't have to go to conventions i know it's not financially feasible for everyone and there's health concerns as well for some folks and i get that but if you can go to whether it's a convention or a game day just like meeting people is so important whether it's online or in a convention because that's it it's just like it's the the people that will just give you that shot and that, that's how I got there. <laughs> right. So uh, do you think that, um, and, and this, world, uh, this word is uh, fantastic for this interview, do you think that the path is uh, <laughs> to become a TTRPG developer uh, has changed from, uh, from the moment you, you first took it? Do you think it's different now for people that want to, to start in the industry? Do you think it's uh, the same, similar? Uh, I think it depends because I feel like a lot of people, like, I feel like there are many different paths to get there. So I think it's always been that way, but I did notice, like, I actually was at uh, the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco last week and I met some people that were, and this was video games, like that, that's very video game focused, but I was at a booth and I had, um, I had like Pathfinder and Starfinder games and people just like, 
tabletop. Like they wanted to come talk to me. Like, ah, uh, and I talked to a lot of people. Um, and it seems like now there are more, there's more careers, like there's more available or or like obvious career paths into games. And I think that if you go the path that you would take into video a video game career, that can also lead you to tabletop. So I see people going through, like going to school for, you know, whether it's like creative writing or, um, you know, like software developing, stuff like that, or take or training, like doing their own learning. I see people come through it to it from that angle. Uh, I also still see people at, co at conventions, like just having chance meetings that, hey, will you see, look at my portfolio while you're at it. Um, so people still do that. Uh, there's there's always like open calls on, on social media as well, which was not something when I was getting into it that didn't really happen. So I think there's more ways now than ever to get into tabletop writing for sure. That's great. And you can be the ONCK for other people. <laughs> well, I hope so. I hope so. Like, I honestly do want to like pay that forward. And because that was something I never expected. Like that really, it was just random and it changed my life. And he didn't, you know, he didn't have to take a chance on a, a person that was unknown. And I found out he's done that for a lot of people in his career. So yeah i definitely i definitely would love to do that for other people for sure um and that's it like i would just say anyone who's who's listening if you're interested in that you know in tabletop like if you can't go to a convention or if you can't find an open call just start writing like start you know do, whether it's a homebrew um or just something you're tinkering with, like start working on it. There's also a lot of things like uh, self-publishing that people do now. Um, there's also Pathfinder and Starfinder Infinite through Paizo. If you want to work in like the Paizo sphere, like if you want to work on with Galarian. Yeah, yeah, if you like our setting. That, that specifically, yeah. specifically for Pathfinder and Starfinder, if you wanted to start a career path uh, mm -hmm. towards that, what should you do? What should anyone do? <laughs> yeah, and that's what I'd say is just uh, play games, write games, you know, try to try to find other people who are doing the same thing. Like, even if you don't find, you know, an Owen Casey Stevens out there, you might find another person who's also trying to get published and you can like workshop together and, and you know, peer review. And that, that can be a really good place to start too, because a lot of the people that I, that were also, um, they're volunteering and doing homebrews. I look around now and I realize like, oh, hey, I work with some of these people or they, they work over at, at, at Wizards of the Coast or they work over at, you know, uh, Monty Cook Games. And it's like, oh, I recognize these people. So trying to just like, just networking, you know, like just meeting other people. And cause that's also what gaming is all about is especially these games is like teamwork. So. Um, that's that's incredible. Uh, I, I really like the, the the talk to people. Just go talk to people mm -hmm. and, and meet people. Um, f for the people watching this, uh, where can they follow the news about the Starfinder Second Edition? So if you go to starfinderplaytest.com, that will have all of our field tests, which if you don't have them, they are free. They are little PDFs that have some snapshots of rules. Y'all were talking about them earlier. They also have some of our developer commentary. Um, some of it is written, <laughs> some of it is written from our little Skittermander uh, Captain Concierge's voice. So it's kind of, some of it's kind of silly, but, it, <laughs> but it's also meant to just be like, here's what we were thinking when we designed this, or here's how our office play test went when we play tested this. It has all of those. It'll have like all the news. Um, and you know, it, it leads, it's it's related to paizo.com. And of course, paizo.com also has like all, you know, all it's all of paizo. So you'll also see like our um, Pathfinder 2, you'll see like our new board games line on there. You'll get all that news, but um, anytime we have a big release or announcement, we, we put a blog there too. So yeah, check out starfinderplaytest.com for sure. Cause that will have everything. 
Jenny, it's been a, a wonderful interview. We learned a lot. Uh, there's things you can't say, but we can read <laughs> between the lines and we hope to, to see the news when it when, when uh, in, in August, uh, sorry. It, uh, so we will be expecting to see everything that, that it's awaiting us for Starfinder. Thank you so, so much. Uh, it, it is great to talk to, to designers and to get a little peek behind the scenes of what happens at Paiso. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. This was a really fun interview.